Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all of you. Okay, uh, before we start our thank you for today, uh, let's kita baca Al-Fatihah untuk pembukaan majlis ya. Okay, uh, so as we know, today is our first uh, bengkel for FSG 631. So, untuk kali pertama kita bergabung for two, uh, untuk dua pesat pengajian, biologi dan juga kimia. So, saya harapkan uh, semoga daripada uh, bengkel hari ini, you all dapat something daripada panel kita iaitu Dr. Kavi Raja. So anything kalau you ada soalan ke apa-apa, you boleh tanya pada dia nanti ya. Okay, before we start, uh, boleh tak uh, all of you can camera snap gambar? Boleh dengar ke suara saya? Anyone boleh. please respond? Boleh, boleh. Boleh, boleh, boleh dengar. Alright, so boleh, boleh tak onkan kamera? Smile. Okay, ready ke? Okay, one. Uh, Mereka Shazli, Mereka Shazli ready tak? Baru ada tak sampai 10 orang on camera. Oh, terus. Okay, kita tunggu lagi. Okay, boleh on dulu lah kot. Sementara. Uh, on dulu. Hmm. Yang tak ada, yang kamera rosak tak apalah. Yang kamera okay boleh on. Saya bagi seminit lagi. <laughs> Amir Hamza, kamera rosak tak apa, jangan uh, speaker yang rosak nanti tak dapat info. Okay, lain tak nak buka eh. Okay, saya tangkap lah. Okay, yang buka kamera senyum. Okay. Satu. Ya, eh, lagi satu. Sekejap eh. Alright, senyum semua. Okay. Alright. Terima kasih. Okay. Um, terima kasih, Madam Shazni. Alright, uh, sebelum tu uh, saya nak ingatkan uh, untuk link hadiran hari ini uh, kita akan ambil pada uh, here bengkel ini ya. So, Uh, kita akan recordkan juga, kita dah recordkan untuk bengkel kali ini So for those yang uh, tak dapat join ataupun you all nak ulang semula Nanti saya akan bagi link recording link Alright, so without any further ado, I pass this session to Dr. Kavi Raja Pandian To, to start the bengkel uh, Dipersilakan Dr. Okay, terima kasih Puan Nasratul atas jemputan ini Saya share screen saya dulu, semua boleh dengar suara saya tak? Boleh. 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 Okay, so boleh nampak ah screen saya ada gerak tak? Gerak. 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 Okay, so first of all, thanks to the organizer for inviting me to share some uh, tips to write the good FYP proposal. So initially when I was invited, so I was thinking of a title on how to write a good FYP proposal. Tapi bila saya fikir balik, dia agak susah kalau saya nak mengajar how to write a good FYP proposal. Sebab a good FYP proposal hanya boleh diajar oleh SV masing-masing. Sebab setiap penyelidik, setiap SV, masing-masing ada dia punya cara nak letakkan points tertentu dalam dia punya, uh, I mean your your proposal, right? So it going, it's going to be different for each of the individual researchers. So always remember, on the beginning, you need to have a very good communication with your SVs. Okay. So sini kita ada pelajar bio dan chemistry, ya. Betul. Good. So some of you, even for biology student, I think some of you I got teach you guys before during the diploma time just now when you turn on the camera i realized okay good to see you back in degree program all right and also uh okay for for the start i'm dr kavi raja okay 
and then i changed the title so initially i thought i wanted to put it as how to write then i changed it into tips because i can only give you the tips i can only give you the guidance what are the things that you can do what are the things that you can explore so that you can make your proposal to become better so before i begin i just would like to give some brief introduction for myself because some of you knows me some of you uh, probably never seen me before so i'm dr kaviraja from uh, i'm a senior lecturer from school of chemistry and environment faculty of applied sciences besides that i'm also the chief editor for journal of academia and also the section editor for another journal under uitm shalam scientific research journal and uh, okay the title again tips to write a good fyp proposal how do i get the tips basically it's based on my past experience i have been the reviewer for the journals index journals many times like this is a statistic that you can see the highest number of times that i have reviewed was last year because last year kan pandemic so kita banyak duduk rumah aja kan so dapatlah banyak invitation untuk review so from there i got many ideas on how do you actually write your research papers or you for you to to plan and design your experiments okay <coughs> and then also i have quite number of publications so okay so this is the timeline of my fyp supervision okay another thing is the whole slides the whole idea that i've prepared over here it actually came from myself so i would say it's like 90% it would be 99% that i have think sebab apa yang saya rasa student saya sendiri kena improvise waktu dia buat proposal dari situlah eh before that any of my students here no right saya rasa saya tak ada FYP1 this semester kot so you all FYP1 this semester yes sir okay right so i don't have FYP student this semester so wish you guys all the best so uh yeah so these are the number of students and also the number of publications that i have managed to produce based on fyp results so many of my publications actually came from fyp how it was possible because we have to monitor we have to design the experiments correctly that's how you can produce an impactful publication mungkin korang akan sekarang akan fikir kenapa pula nak bincang pasal publication see kita buat penyelidikan for what you are going to do the research if you're not going to publish it be it in a normal journal you have to publish it then that is a value for your research otherwise dia akan tidur je dalam kabinet nanti. Selepas dah habis semua, your thesis will be kept inside the cabinet. You akan jumpa banyak Spider-Man je nanti. Alright? So to avoid that, you need to go to the next step. So for you to go to the next, the final step, the beginning is very important. Okay? <coughs> okay, why do we need the research proposal? There are three criteria here. To convince the examiners and readers. Okay, especially in your case, it's going to be your uh, examiner lah. Sebab examiner yang akan bagi markah kan. So, you need to convince in terms of the importance, novelty and worthwhile. Novelty maksudnya apakah pembaruan. Okay, what is the new thing that can be found from your research compared to the previous studies. The second thing, to understand the research flow, self-confident to conduct the research. If you have done a very good research proposal, the next semester, it's going to be... <coughs> It's going to be uh, without any or much struggle. You can conduct the experiment. Why? Because you already plan well. Okay, you you yourself will have the confidence on how to perform, how to carry out the research, right? And the last part over here is the research planning feasibility. Always remember, okay, you also must communicate this with your SVs. You have to see the scope of the work for your research because now you are planning okay during my degree time it was totally different waktu saya degree kita orang ada dua semester juga semester kelima dan semester ke-6 semester kelima kita dah start masuk lab so kita buat proposal waktu kita uh, buat eksperimen sampai semester tu kita buat proposal juga but here it is totally different the whole semester you are dedicating for a proposal writing only so you have like 3 to 4 months and then when you go to the semester 2 the FYP2, you're going to have three to four months only for you to complete the research. So you cannot come out with some mind-blowing ideas, obviously, for FYP work because the limitation of the time. And also, you're going to plan out apakah facility yang kita ada di campus kita. Whether we can collaborate with anyone or not. All this you have to discuss now, which will give you the self-confidence. <coughs> okay, kita belum start lagi. Baru nak start ni. Okay, the contents. So the content that I've put it over here is the title, 
what are the key important elements of the title, introduction, literature review, methodology, ethical approval, references, and AI tools. So my coverage over here will be very general. Okay, I don't go in detail because as I mentioned earlier, the very detailed part is going to be, is you need to communicate with your SV. Okay, you need to get your topic. Okay, uh, just, just give me uh, some answers. You can use the raise hand because I'm using two screens. So I also can see you at the same time, I'll be seeing my slides. So you just use the button to raise hand. How many of you already have a title for FIP? <coughs> Okay, but all right. Okay. Okay. Ada yang angkat tangan lepas tu turun. Kenapa? Topik dah berubah. Okay, I think uh, I can see majority of you already have a title, which is good. So now each and everything that I'm going to teach you or uh, the tips, you can directly start to implement. Okay. So remember, my the coverage here is going to be very general, but I hope. I can teach you some tips. So, about tips, ni, waktu saya degree ke, waktu saya PhD pun belum ada lagi. So, so we have a lot of shortage there. So, but now we are in a um, advanced technology era. So, we have a lot of tools that can help us to meet the certain things. Okay. <coughs> okay. Title. When we look at the title, that is your first impression. Okay, so make sure you know how to write, how to put the title in a better way so that it can be catchy and it can attract the attention of your examiner. Okay, and another thing that you should focus is fewest possible words. Must sufficiently describe the content of proposal. What is your whole research? Later, I'll show you some examples <coughs> of titles. Be specific and minimize the words. Don't make it like you talk about thesis kamu ataupun your proposal nanti, jangan pula you buat dia punya title je dah 10 baris. Examiner belum start baca proposal lagi. Dia baca the title, dia dah mula mengantuk dah. Okay, why? Do not create long titles. Often long titles are meaningless. Okay, when you create your very long titles, it's going to be meaningless. So what would be the ideal? Ideal title can have like maximum 15 words. Or... Don't go until 20. La. For me, 20 also quite <coughs> lengthy. Really. Okay. Importance of a good title. How, how the good title can be defined. It decides if someone wanted to continue to read your proposal or not. All right. But yeah, this is a general guideline. Uh, whether whether we want it or not, examiners, kita memang kena baca lah. No choice. But kita nak bagi marka, kan? But this is... See, what I'm going to teach you is not only for your FIP proposal, but it, you can use all these techniques, these tips for wherever you go later. All right. Okay. Use appropriate keywords in the title. Why the keywords are important? Because the keywords, okay, if any one of you are writing there, okay, while listening, you don't need to write. Later, I can share my slides. Okay. I've prepared the slides with a lot of embedded links because I just want you guys to focus, listen, and take whatever message that I'm going to give you. Okay, so you don't, you don't, uh, I mean, you don't like uh, lose concentration while you're writing, right? So don't worry, I'll give you, I'll, I will give you all my slides, okay? Right. <coughs> so appropriate keyword, keywords <coughs> will actually define and tells you what you're going to do in your experiment, okay? So you can use words like investigation, synthesis, application, assessing, elucidating, modeling, and so on. Right, and let's look at one of the example title synthesis and application of a novel composite coagulant 8 from rice starch and sesbania seed gum for water treatment. So, this title might be look like a bit lengthy, but <coughs> all the important elements are there. Okay, I wouldn't say it's too long, but all the important elements are there in the title. <coughs> for example, the process it's going to be a synthesis and application. Okay. It's not about preparation. Preparation is different. Preparation means you take A, you take B, you blend it, then prepare. Synthesis means you're going to start it from the starting material itself. You're going to add in the chemicals and so on. All right? So the process, it's good for you to mention that. So that examiner, when they read the title, they will get the, the idea what they're going to do. And then what are the material or what is your target? What is the subject of your research? Put that. 
that is one of the keywords as well. And then if let's say you're focusing on the application, I know some of you will be focusing on the application, but some of you might be might be on a very fundamental topics so like uh, diversity studies and so on. Okay, so that is the keywords. You have to use that specificity, this very specifically, so that it will give you the right title and the idea. <coughs> the second title here, the antimicrobial activity of honey and propolis extracts from the central region of Romania. This is a wonderful title. Why? Because it has process, it has the material of their interest, and there is a specificity, which means they are focusing on a target group. Because I have seen, uh, maybe biology side, uh, you have the opportunity to make use of our forests. Why them call it pillar? We have forests. We have a natural resources. So if let's say your study is going to be focusing on those forests, make sure you include that. That is the selling point of your of your whole proposal of your idea because it's going to be like specific region. Okay, so you can include something like that. <coughs> okay, now I'll go in detail one by one for the introduction. So um, yeah, here I've given just short points. So later I'll go again in detail. So introductions generally comprises of four things for FIP proposal. Eh? Uh, if let's say you're going to prepare a proposal for a grant application or something, then the then the criteria, everything will be different. This is for the proposal. Okay, For the background, don't write much. First of all, for the introduction, I have seen students because I also become the examiner for the proposals. Okay, So when I see, sometimes I see that uh, introduction alone, 20 pages. So I was like, wow such a long introduction okay introduction should be straight to the point okay <coughs> straight to the point be concise and just deliver the messages that you wanted to inform to the examiner okay how do you make it short and concise keep it sh short just by having one to two pages the background you don't need to explain too much just give the first idea okay don't 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 put any suspense there you have to give out the first idea only so you can briefly explain the problem statement briefly. You don't need to go in detail because later you have another chapter, another subtopic called problem statement. Okay, because a research without a problem, there is me no meaning there. Okay, we are, why are we doing the research? Because we wanted to solve a problem. That is the main goal, right? So <coughs> just give a brief statement on the problem statement. You can be general as possible. What are the materials or techniques available? and also straight to the points okay you don't need to like uh, your your target is the center point but you wanted to start from the beginning and then you go to the end then you back, then only you're coming back to the center point no go straight to the point okay at the background okay problem statement also direct to the point and preferably 0 0.5 to one page enough one page pun bagi fyp okay because you have to always bear in your mind the your the given time for you to do the lab work is just four months or three months. Kalau pandemic, what makmal dari rumah? Tatalam cuma nak buat makmal dari rumah. Okay, it will be totally converted, right? <coughs> so you have to make a very short problem statement, which is necessary that can be solved within the given time frame. List down two to three practical problems that can be solved from your research. So two to three. If you want to make it two, very good. That's enough. Don't even go to three. Even for a master projects, um, it's not as advisable to go like three. Uh, three is okay, fine. But like four or five problem statements are too many already. Cannot be completed. That is for two years project, you know. Okay. So this is just a very small project. So you have to highlight the important point, the important uh, problems, which can be addressed within that time period. <coughs> and don't ever try to solve the global issues okay yeah you can be ambitious but always don't try to address like global issues like okay that is a waste waste problem so by doing this method i can clean the whole world okay so sometimes i have read that kind of a statement okay even for my students i have i have seen those kind of a statement my, my previous students when i checking their proposal so i asked them to to correct that so that it can be uh, we can narrow down the scope okay <coughs> significance emphasize on the importance of your current work significance means what is the importance of your work again don't go beyond 0 0.5 to 1 page is enough okay 
and be it an answer for your problem statement. So significance should be related to your problem statement. So problem, you introduce your problem detailedly. Then now, how you are going to solve? By solving this method significance, what is the novelty or what is the importance that you have in this project? So that is the idea. Okay. And then last part is objectives. You can follow a smart uh, technique. So later I will introduce this technique to you. <coughs> Again, all these are from my point of view. All right. So you you always need a good communication with your SV. Okay. So I also have seen and I myself have faced a problem where students they don't come and uh, you know uh, check with me they don't discuss their problem they don't discuss what they don't understand so when they when they don't discuss i also can't help it because lecturers you have to remember they're also busy with the research with the admin work with the teaching and so on so we also need to guide you so it's like uh, you have to go and look for your lecturers you have to make an appointment let's say your lecturer is very busy then go keep up the time and you have to meet them frequently my humble request please do that okay now we go in detail <coughs> research background okay just now i mentioned you just write one to two pages enough right okay these are the important points that you should take note in the research background be it interesting that captures the attention of readers and examiners how to make it interesting introduce the problem that you wish to investigate in the first place Without the problem, just now I, I mentioned that without the problem, there is there is no research. So you have to highlight the problem. The problem must give the interest for the examiners to continue read. Because the first impression is very good, very important. No? If let's say your first introduction, <coughs> my personal experience, it's like it's like uh, not arranged properly it's like totally out of shape and so on i will lose mood to further read yes i will read because i have to give the marks but obviously when i read i have to read it repeatedly okay i have to read it again and again so that i can extract the important points that need to be delivered because it's not being arranged in a proper way so if you want to know what is the way for you to arrange you can use this kind of a methods okay so be general, as I mentioned, you don't need to go in detail, okay? But be specific on your problem. <coughs> Use the examples of a larger context, then narrow down to your population. So you also can Google. I think there are some fun kind of uh, diagrams where you have to discuss a broader topic. From there, you have to narrow down, narrow down the problem. Then you highlight, this is the only problem that I wanted to solve. As I mentioned, the small problem, see, yeah, very simple. Let me give you one example. Kita makan something. Lepas tu ada plastik kan? Tak tahu nak bawa mana. Tak, tak jumpa tong sampah. Buanglah dekat sungai. That is the small problem. Tapi kalau semua orang buat benda yang sama, sungai tu dah jadi sampah. Full of rubbish. Right. That is a global issue. You understand? So you have to start from there. Then you narrow down. That means the way you explain. You are not going to solve the global issue. You are going to solve the your problem simple as that to make it clear and for you to understand okay <coughs> and then okay i think i have to go fast a bit but masa sampai pukul 4 dah i i told panasa to i'll try to make it one hour um okay i'll try my best to go fast okay uh, and then uh, last paragraph emphasize on the novelty see the very last paragraph of the introduction is the is the selling point okay so the selling point here you have to be uh, make it no i mean you have to introduce the novelty what is the good thing about your research so that is the very important paragraph for me lah. okay <coughs> problem stuff in a statement keep it short and concise as, as this one i already mentioned just now gather information do intense lr lr is literature review will be useful for your chapter two later because without doing a proper analysis on the literature review, you cannot write a good problem statement. So you have to do that. And later I'll teach you how to do that. So simplify the problem. For FIP project, try to find simple one to two problems. That is enough. That can be solved within four to five months. Okay. Again, don't try to address the global issue. Small problem, enough. Ambitious problem. So this is the one that I mentioned just now, again and again. 
okay do not find larger scale problems which will require you one to two years to complete so you cannot do that okay practically it's not possible <coughs> okay significance significance is basically the answer for your problem statement you can make it in that way answer to your ps ps is not playstation eh? okay so ps is problem statement here make sure you answer your problem statement because when we when we are examiners we will check okay this is your introduction okay this is the problem that you've introduced is that related to your significance or not so we will check that okay that's how we give you good marks or bad marks okay emphasize on the novelty you can you can always have novelty means uh, something like the new things that you introduce okay what is the good thing the importance of your research <coughs> What new insights information will be produced from your studies? So always you can compare the previous studies from the literature, what people have done, what is the new thing that you are going to do, okay? Okay, objective, this is the SMART framework. So if you guys pernah dengar SMART framework, okay, if yes, good. If no, okay, let me tell you what is this. SMART here is each of the alphabet stands for one uh, aspect specific measurable attainable relevant timeliness so specific means introduce okay see objective also how many objective you need to write you can write one to three objective okay or you, you wanted to put like one problem one objective to solve that fine okay <coughs> focus on specific outcome set real numbers with the real deadlines so don't put i want more visitors okay so this one the examples i took from somewhere okay this is not from myself alone okay so i want more visitors what what kind of objectives that you have to be specific i want 100 visitors okay that is specific quantitative right measurable the goal is trackable so you can know when it will begin and when it can be finished and then uh, attainable also so you have put this in your mind you only have like four to five months five months the maximum ready i think you have to you have to you're gonna so so bloom semester mula good then you might have five months otherwise you're going to have maximum like four months so you have to plan well relevant be honest with yourself and the available facility so another important challenge <coughs> when i newly joined uitm i had these challenges the facilities see we are small campus so you have to go and survey now itself what are the facilities that you have is it possible for you to plan your research okay for example eh, if let's say kita nak study morphology maksudnya dia punya permukaan surface area kita kena guna SEM kita tak ada pun dekat 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 uh, UiTM Kuala Pila so you need to find someone so talk to your SV ask your SV to connect with other collaborators so that you can do an impactful research and remember for students uh, before this we had a tabung tapa um, i'm not sure how much you're eligible so i, I can't remember now so you can claim that certain money very small money but you can use that money to do, to uh, send your sample for characterization outside okay <coughs> timeliness deadlines must be there so that you know when to finish it okay and normally the deadlines here can be communicated through the gun chat you don't need to put inside your objective okay you can communicate that later on the gun chat okay <coughs> chapter two literature review okay so each of these i've put it over here i have a detailed explanation also it's a comprehensive you can do it like approximately 20 pages it covers supposed to cover in and out of every aspect in your study you don't need to go like uh, too much but relevant one okay and then appropriate literature search get familiar with literature tools use uitm repos 3 okay i'll teach you how to do this lr metrics later i'll show you the examples track record this is my personal one so i will show you also okay content what are the main content that you have? Okay, this one, seriously, I'm sorry. Uh, for biology, you might have a different style of writing. Okay, so this one, based on my style of writing, normally I will ask my students to introduce your materials, analytes, because my expertise is on a chemical sensor by using a conducting polymers. And now I'm also focusing on sustainable waste management. So this is how I plan out. Okay, and then from there, I will make it subtopics so that so that they can come out with some idea and finally they can get the research gap research gap so you are basically you need to uh, close the gap that is the research then it's like complete your research <coughs> okay obviously you need some tools to do this 
so this one okay so we have uh, our online database how many of you know how to use the online database raise up your hand online database that means our library okay all of you know okay that's fantastic okay that's fantastic so probably to save the time i no need to teach you if you if you want me to just show you also i can show you okay another thing our pitar okay our library they have a uh, class kemahiran maklumat there are uh, like 11 modules over here about how to use the online database and uh, on the reference manager and so on so all these are links okay all these are links so later when i give you these slides you can click these links and you can <coughs> you can uh, i mean you can access those links okay so these are the platform that you can find the literature okay so here all of them are very top and good journal publishers here are some databases that contains only the abstract title that's all nothing much okay but important one impactful but the knowledge about this is not really important for you guys now at the moment <laughs> okay among the given given tools here i mean your given publisher which one is the most you all use can you type just quickly type the chat box i just want to have a look <coughs> which means tak start guna lagi lah ni belum start guna ke springer wow elsevier okay good google scholar okay Science Direct, okay. All right, good. Okay, Google Scholar, I can see majority of you are using Google Scholar. Okay, that's good. Okay, you have to remember Google Scholar is a giant. Almost you can get uh, any papers, but <coughs> you also be sh bear in your mind that Google Scholar just capture any indexing. So now the latest issue is predatory journals, which means those are fake journals fake journals tend to publish fake data fake results so always go for a go for a what you call that reliable search engines okay something like the elsevier just now i, I saw some of you using elsevier some of you are using springer mdpi is open access no need to pay you can just go there you can just click all this logo here i've put in there what you call that um the link you can go directly to that general page but all of them are subscription based so data i'll show you this iop aip they are basically for the conference journals you can find and joa journal of academia so initially i mentioned that i'm a chief editor for journal of academia right you also can find here also i got put the links you can go to the journal of academia you also can find some journals if you find it relevant you can take the idea you can you can cite the paper in your proposal okay that would be good enough <coughs> Okay, so all this, uh, I would, okay, just now. Uh, okay, please use, it's a humble request, please use our online database. You know why? Any idea how much we are paying for this database or not? Anyone? Just want to have a guess? Berapa banyak yang kita bayar? No idea. Juta. Juta, okay, good. How many millions is that? Okay, I'm going to show you that. It's confidential. Cost langanan 23 online database oleh UITM. 9 juta setahun. For the, not the MDPI, MDPI is open access, but for other publishers. Okay, the amount that we are paying per year is 9 million. By, just by UITM. Saya belum include lagi. UM, USM semua. UITM. Same sahaja. We are paying that much. And tadi ada yang cakap guna Science Direct kan? Okay, good. You are using Science Direct. Sebab untuk Science Direct sahaja, kita spend per year 3 juta ringgit Malaysia. So, you have to use that. Okay, you have to use that. Anyone don't know how to use? How to use our online database? Raise up your hand. No one. One, two. 
Okay, very few. All right. So <coughs> I'm glad that you know how to use that because when I ask my students, they normally tell me they go to Google Scholar and use it. Okay. So um, looking at the, the time, so I just wanted to skip. Okay, I, I, I'm going to skip this hands-on how to use the library facility. But if you if you have any problem in accessing how to use, you are not sure. You can always contact me. I'm, I'm more than happy to help you how to use to guide you. Also, you can join PTAR classes or you can refer to your SV. Okay. <coughs> okay, now let's go to the LR metrics. This is one of the important parts. Many students stuck here. Metrics is basically something like this. It's a table, it's a coding, okay? Where you you can you can put the ideas and then you can draft a, a, a paragraph very easily. So I'll show you in, in a while. So there are numerous templates available in the Google. Eh? In, you just go and Google search, you can find a lot. Keep updated, which means pull up a set of recent research papers. Often, I see, uh, based on my experience, eh? When I read the proposal or my students' proposal, sometimes I see they include a lot and lot of <coughs> outdated references, 1980s, 1970s. It's no more relevant, okay? Unless it's a basic principle, then yeah, probably you can you can quote those references. But the reference, like majority, are from very outdated references. Even in the year 2000, 2010. If let's say you're going to put many references from 2000 to 2010 in your proposal i would ask you back people like you know did that 10 years back why you are why you are doing back what people have done before so you have to always refer to the latest articles latest journals where to find the database that i showed you just now okay go to science direct science direct normally all are reliable journals there so quick grasp or ideas, you know better what to write and where to start from if you do the proper literature review. Is your LR writing, it's time efficient, multitasking as well. So how it can be time efficient, I'll show you in a while. Pre-prepared, see this word doesn't exist in English. Pre-prepared, prepared is the word. But I put here pre-prepared, that means, you see, when you write a literature review, you're going to have two elements there. One of the uh, sorry, three elements. One obviously the content that you're going to write. Second one, the graph, the 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 diagrams, the figures from other journals. You just copy and then you paste, right? Okay. Third one is the table. You need to a good literature review. How to score a good mark in literature review? You have to do a table form. You have to summarize. Don't ever later. I'll show you. Do what are the do's and don'ts in the literature review? Okay. <clears throat> so when by doing this literature review matrix. You can come up with your own table. You don't need to sit down and do another time. That is called multitasking as well. So let's look at the. <coughs> See, obviously, you can you can fine tune these tables based on your chitrasa. Okay, what you want to write, what you need, you you can always modify that. This is just I'm giving some examples here. Okay, one of the pattern what you can do is you can put the numbers. Obviously, how many papers. The title, the journal name, okay, for you to refer back, and also you can put the reference or the link there so that it can directly link you to the reference that you checked. <coughs> what are the main content? You have to put the main topic. Like my case, if let's say it's a pure polyaniline, it's a polymer, so I can put the main topic. What are the advantages, disadvantages, conclusion, and key remarks? You can actually arrange these points in a sentence. Okay, I'll show you. In a, okay, this is another type of literature review matrix table. There is a slight difference. Obviously, the initial parts, okay, obviously, the initial parts like title, journal, all these are the same. Reference must be there. <coughs> Remember, for your proposal, if I'm not mistaken, it's APA format. So there are no numberings. So please use the proper tool to make APA format. Don't use the numbering. Okay, so here you have. The number of journal, the title, authors. Okay, Samba Sivam is my father. <laughs> okay, because when when I write journals, obviously my father name will become the the the, the calling name. Okay, so that is a tradition. The last name they used to call. Okay, the objective. This this is one of my paper, my PhD paper, very first PhD paper. See, 
uh, authors, I put that uh, group, Samasivam, objective, detection of hydrazine. Hydrazine is a chemical, a toxic compound. The problem statements, all available sensors are tedious. I just put in a very short point form. And then methodology that I used was spectroscopic related sensor. And then the finding, the sensor proven to detect hydrazine with lowest LOD of 1 ppm. Very simple explanation. Conclusion, the present sensor could replace the traditional sensors. So all this, <coughs> you imagine I fill up the DM. Okay, now, I want to put this idea into the writing. How do I do that? Okay. Let me just try. Okay. Uh, you just listen. Eh? Samba Sivam it all, or Samba Sivam and co-workers, reported that all available sensors for hydrazine detection are tedious first sentence therefore they introduced a new spectroscopic related sensor uh, with the lowest limit of detection which is one ppm so i combine these two second sentence the third one therefore the the present sensor could replace the traditional sensors three sentence just from one row over here, row of column, okay, you can get three sentences. Then you imagine you have all these tables filled up, just five. You could make one paragraph, easy or not, by using the literature review matrix table, just by having row by row, <coughs> you could write one paragraph. But remember, I would recommend you the good one. Lah. Okay, I'm recommending you the good one. You, if you want to write a paragraph, you you just take one, two, three. Enough. Just take the three journals. You take the idea. You put it. You write it. Four and five, or maybe you can find until ten. The whole table you copy, you paste in your literature review. Okay, and then you put a title. The summary of finding for this subtopic. What? Whatever subtopic is yours. See you can complete that very easily okay so that's how you do the literature review metrics okay so this is uh one day one journal this is something that i have done i just quickly show you guys you can see my screen okay <coughs> so this was uh i did this in the end of 2019 but I didn't do for long. I only I only did it like for 40 days. Okay. Um, I only did it for 40 days. What are the benefit I got? I put the date, the day I did the literature review. That means I just one day I take one journal, I just read. I don't go critically. I just read. I put the link, I put the journal name, the, the volume here, and then I put the key remark. Until now, okay, based on this, 40 days only I did. Based on this, last year I managed to apply total 11 grants. Obviously, none was successful, but <coughs> I got the idea. I got the idea to write. I could write many things. Just for 40 days, I did that. Okay. So please, you also can do that. It will be very, very helpful for your knowledge. Okay. <coughs> okay, now you can see my slide again. You can see LR do's and don'ts? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, some yes. of the do's and don'ts, thank you, in the literature review writing. Do's, one of the things that you're supposed to do. <coughs> Stay focused on your topic. Don't deviate much. You don't, you're talking about, for example, like uh, enzyme A. Then suddenly you go totally out of the box and you talk about the organism. So, there is no relationship from one topic to another topic make sure there is a sequence provide a critical opinion as a summary of three to four literature so this is the one i told you just now the literature lr literature review matrix table you got fill up 10 row for example you just take three or four you make the sentence just now i told you right how to make the sentence you just make the sentence and finally you conclude you give your remark <coughs> i will tell you again in the don'ts about this 
use and refine figures from other articles. You may use figures you can crop and you can put in your literature review to explain. <coughs> Maximize table usage to show summary of few findings. So the table is the LR matrix. You have to use the matrix so that you can easily get. What are the don'ts? Don't use table of comparison, comparison from other articles or review paper. So when you read a review paper, when you read a, a journal, they might have used, normally in the review paper, like they use their own table, right? You don't just crop the table you put inside your proposal. So what did you learn? They put the table, that means they went through all the articles. But just by cropping and you put it back here, what do you, what do you have learned? You have to ask yourself. This is about learning process. I know this is tough, but trust me, whatever that you're going to do, it will be very beneficial for you in future, especially in your marks. Like, okay, as an examiner, I would love to see that. I would love to see your efforts. I would give a lot of marks if, if I can see that. Okay, so chemistry students, later, if you find that, found that I'm your examiner, you know how I mark. Okay. <coughs> So uh, don't frequently write, okay, this is also another problem. Right? One whole paragraph will be written like this. Hamad et al. shows that, Amang et al. indicated that, Mutu et al. reported that, then what is your opinion? Right? right. If let's say everyone says this, that, this, that, then what, what do you have to say? So it related to the point number two here. You explain about three authors, then you give your comment. What is your opinion about that if you don't know how to do that opinion go to your sv check with your sv discuss with your sv they will guide you trust me <coughs> don't be too ambitious to write up all global issues so this one already explained just now you don't need to go like too beyond don't deviate too much okay <coughs> sorry i just bring some water because um, i'm recovering from uh, my sick i was having cells emerging all right, <coughs> some of the common complaints huh, that I, I see. My vocab of English is not so good. I don't know how to rewrite or rephrase sentences from articles to avoid plagiarism issue. Plagiarism means a copy paste issue. <coughs> so uh, not only is to, uh, the complaint is from students, even from researchers, even I myself can say that I'm not good. I'm not, I'm not the best to write, okay? I'm still learning too, but trust me, this new technological technology era, we have a lot of platforms. Okay, before I show this one quickly, uh, how many of you know about Academic Phrase Bank? <coughs> don't know. Oh, don't know. Okay, let me show you. You can oh. use this. Also, this is an embedded link. Okay. You can see you can see the Manchester 1824 Academic Phrase Bank. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So later I'll pass you guys these slides. You can click that picture. It will direct you to this website. Okay. What is this website? You can you can choose what you wanted to uh, explain. Okay. The word. basically it's going to give you the sentences. For example, literature review. We were talking about literature review, right? referring to sources that means you're referring to some references okay what kind of issue that you wanted to explain previous research area investigated you click this it will give you some example of sentences to date several studies have investigated on blah 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 you already got some idea you just take and put it into here okay so yeah this is basically uh, some ways of introducing quotation <coughs> This, the studies presented thus far provide evidence that, see, wow, fantastic. The sentence is fantastic. All right. So you can get some ideas here. If you don't know how to write a proper sentence, you can take it from here and you optimize with your own points. Not only about literature review, you can find many. You want to describe your methods. What are the things that you want to describe your method? How? What is the way? You can just click one. Then they will show you after something, then training the participants were told that uh, something like that. <coughs> so I would say here the phrase banger, 
it contains about easily thousand phrases. It's not word phrases. So you can easily collect those phrases. You can use that if you if you find it difficult to write. Okay, that's all about that. I have to rush ready. <coughs> I hope it is helpful for all of you. Oh, let's end on now only. Okay, say lam say over to Okay. All right, we go to the chapter three methodology. <coughs> Most important section that determines the success rate of a research, use uh, future tense. Okay, um, our talk actually until four o'clock, right? For Nasratu, and the Panchasri. Okay. Yeah, doctor. Ah, kita punya talk ni sampai pukul empat, eh? Okay, so I still have time. Ah, betul. Bye. Alright. Okay. <coughs> okay. Use future tense, very important. I often see students when they when they take the idea, sometimes they overlook. Okay. Even I do that sometimes. Okay. We overlook, we just take the phrase and we put it into our proposal. But when you take it from journal, journal is something that already done, experiments done. So the methodology will be written in the past tense. But your proposal is something that you're going to do. It's a future work. So it should be put in a present tense, future tense. Okay, better future tense. <coughs> Important elements of methodology. So also this is just my brief guideline, and it might be differ according to your research area. Some of you might be using sample collection. Okay, for example, you go into the forest and then you might collecting. Um, maybe you are collecting some 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 ants. Okay, or some bees. So you will have a sample collection section. So you have to put it in the first part over here. Okay. <coughs> so it will differ according to the to the your research scope. So, but anyhow, generally, the first part in the methodology, you have to reveal your brand's purity model of the chemical apparatus or instruments that you use. The next part, it could be on the synthesis, characterization, and the preparation of your materials. And uh, last part would be the process application, which will give you the final validation for your research. So when we go in detail for the chemical apparatus instrumentation, okay, for example, chemicals, you're using some solvent, make sure it's mandatory. Eh? I put it here mandatory because I always call my students if they miss out this, because whenever they write, I will inform them really. Make sure to put the brand and the model of the purity. How do you find that? Obviously, you have to go and check it. You have to go to the website. You can easily go to Sigma Outreach for like chemicals means or any supplier website. You can check their purity, the brand that that you might be using. So please indicate that because some examiners like me, okay, when I check, if you have given those ideas, oh, definitely I'll give you good marks. Why? Because I know you have done the research, you have done the, the searching work properly. Okay, that's important element. Okay. <coughs> Apparatus, do not list down common glassware like beakers, burettes, like measuring cylinder, the one hot plate, the one you don't need to list down. Do mention if, let's say, you're using some special equipment like aspirator pump, vacuum pump, or incubator or furnace that you're using. Okay, you can mention that the model. If you don't know what is the model that available in Qualipila, check with your SV. Or you can check with your seniors who have done the previous work under your SV. Instruments. <coughs> Again, the apparatus is not really mandatory. Okay. Instruments also may discuss in the characterization part. You don't need to put as one section. Now, normally, I don't recommend my students to put as one section. But sometimes, some students, they might be collaborating with the external uh, universities. So they will have a special equipment, instruments. So they, it's better for them to identify and list out the condition, the setting, and so on. Okay, synthesis and preparation and then characterization. So synthesis is normally it's a chemical process. <coughs> it involves several chemicals to facilitate synthesis. So, <coughs> sorry. You have to be uh, very specific and mention the small matters also like temperature, time taken, if a stirring process, how long it's been done and everything. <coughs> Preparation is basically a blending process. It means just like I mentioned just now, you take A, you take B, mix, you get C. But with some conditions, right? You have to explain the condition. That is the preparation. Okay. Characterization, 
uh, basically uh, it's an empirical data. You you will be based on the characterization. You will be getting some data. So so you have to explain how to characterize this. All this information, basic information, can be found from the journals. Okay, but the model of the instruments and so on, obviously, you need to check at the other websites. <coughs> Process or application, so it totally depends on each process or application because some FYP projects, if let's say your project is a fundamental project, okay, you wanted to solve a fundamental issue, you won't go until the application. That's fine, that's good enough because it's a fundamental project, okay? So it depends. That's why I put it over here. It depends on the state of your research. Stay focused and try to study the most easiest parameters. You don't try to involve like very... Um, complicated stuff for example like a sensor application means i normally do because i'm from sensor application my expertise so i normally ask my fyp students just do calibration curve selectivity reusability long-term stability just four parameters enough done finish the fyp but to do that four parameters they might take like one to two months okay because it's it's like you need to do that repeatedly you need to have few replicates if let's say absorption based application you can just focus on few parameters like ph uh, absorbent amount, initial concentration and time, enough. Don't go beyond that. Because the other data comes from your characterization. You also use some other instruments, right? So you already have a lot of data there, which is good enough, which is a publishable work later on, after your FIP2. But now you have to plan well for that. <coughs> okay, ethical approval. All right. Okay, I can finish. So uh, <coughs> this is something that, uh, I mean, already exists. But now the emphasis is more stronger. See, um, we have biology students. So more, normally they might be involving any uh, human sample like blood, urine, DNA or stool samples. If let's say you involve any animals or uh, these kind of a things, there, there must be a, we have a committee. Ethics committee, we have ethics committee in each of the campus under the discipline, Kualapila, Saramban and also Rambau. Okay, and Dr. Eddie from Food Tech, he's the head of the ethics committee. You have to you have to fill up a form. Obviously, you have to ally with your SV to fill up the form. You have to send it before you begin your research. Huh? Before you begin your research, you have to send it and get the approval. Okay, <coughs> and then we have a Jawatan Kwasa Penyelidikan Negeri, which will be headed by our rector. So it will be endorsed and approved at the JPN committee. Then only you can conduct the research. If let's say it's dealing with this human or animal samples, uh, sensitive elements, basically this ethical approval. And also uh, if let's say there are questionnaire, okay, some of you maybe just do a qualitative based research. So I'm not sure if you're doing a qualitative means uh, it's going to be like, uh, obviously there will be a, a data analysis, but it's based on questionnaire. So you give out the questions to someone, right? Also must go through the ethics committee. <coughs> okay. Sebab kita risau, mungkin ada soalan yang sensitif. Contohnya, kamu tanya ke saya, berapa umur saya? Saya kecil hati pula. Okay. Contohlah. Okay. So, this kind of a things that need to be monitored. I mean, you need early preparation. Next time, kamu nak start FYP2, you cannot be like, baru nak hantar ethics. Tak, don't, don't do that. Don't do last minute work. You have to prepare from now itself. If let's say it involves questionnaire. <coughs> References, I won't go in detail because I was informed that uh, there'll be another session for all of you to, to do the, to manage the references. Okay, what do we have? We have Mendeley, it's a free software. EndNote, EndNote is a subscription base, but you can always check with the library. Peter is a library. <coughs> you can download, you can plug in and always Cross check. That's very important. Okay. <coughs> Many of my students they use Mendeley. Even I use Mendeley. But uh, one moment. See, Mendeley is a, one of the fantastic tool. But you must remember, sometimes Mendeley will not capture the references properly. Okay. You do citation in your in your word file. And then when you create the bibliography, <coughs> at the bibliography, you can find the author's name. The title of the journal will be there. The journal name will be missing. And the year will be appear as ND, not detected. All this you must check. 
if you don't check, examiners will cut the maximum mark over there. Okay, that's very important. Many students they overlook this, including my own students. I have, um, I have, I have told them about this. Okay, always cross check. The Mendeley it's just an AI tool. It's just a software. Don't depend too much on the Mendeley. <coughs> Latest. So I also got discuss about this just now. Make sure eighty percent of your references are twenty sixteen and twenty twenty one. Okay. So um, don't 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 use. I mean, yeah, you, you can tolerate. You can go like you know seventy percent are latest or seventy five percent latest references, but don't go lower than that, lah. Okay, I mean, don't go uh, yeah lower than that. Don't take too much of old references because those are outdated. It doesn't gives much impact for your research. <coughs> okay, I'm almost there to finish. Okay, but here it it involves some uh, it involves some AI tools, artificial intelligence, but obviously these tools here are subscription based, which means you need to purchase okay um <coughs> okay scholarship is this is basically going to facilitate you eh? okay see during my time um when i did my degree forgot 20 to sorry 2009 or 2008 maybe i did that time we don't have this software i finished my phd in 2015 that time also we didn't have these softwares okay we didn't have so it was like all like you know we have to do it by ourselves and um, quite challenging and very time consuming but now we have so many tools here okay so you can't really give much excuses yes of course if you don't understand certain basic thing you can discuss with your sv but the 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 tools that can help you you can always use them but remember, all of them are purchasing based. But still, there are some loopholes. You can always go to the online platform to buy them, which might be cheaper. I'm not sure. You can check that <coughs> yourself. But uh, just quick one. Scholarly, Grammarly, Quillboard, all these softwares. Pernah nampak anywhere or pernah dengar, pernah guna anyone? Pernah. Pernah guna? Pernah. <coughs> Okay. okay good so if you have if you guys have used that that's very good okay so scholarly is basically for you to collect the literature review grammarly you can it will correct your grammatical errors but to certain extent don't trust too much that's what i can say quillboard is a paraphrasing tool okay if let's say there is a very difficult sentence in any general articles what you could do is you can copy paste and you can just put it there and uh, it will paraphrase it will paraphrase the <coughs> the sentence and it will give you this thing quillboard will be a, one you can use that during the writing another thing is you can use that if let's say before you submit your proposal or FIP report right you need to check for the plagiarism turn it in right so that time you also can use this to minimize because I always use this to minimize. Whenever I submitting my papers to, to to journals, sometimes I realize my plagiarism might be like a bit higher. So to reduce that, I use Quillboard. But yeah, after you use Quillboard, you also have to check yourself the grammar. It's okay or not. All this, if let's say you don't have much funding to send it to proofreader, you can do it yourself. <coughs> Ref and write, I'm not. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. I, I I personally don't use this. Okay, some of the softwares. Okay, for example, BioRender. So I just thought of showing you guys. Uh, before I show that here. So remember, uh, for chemistry students, biology students, I think should be the same. You guys, if let's say have any uh, molecular structures that you wanted to show, you cannot just copy paste actually. You have to draw it yourself. So you can use the cam draw or cam sketch kind of a software. Bio render is another sophisticated software. Are you guys familiar with the bio renders? No. No. Okay. So in future you can use this. 
let me just quickly show yeah. you guys but uh this one also subscription based so i don't subscribe okay because because it's very expensive so say the subscribe so if let's say the subscribe you can use up to five figures only so far say tak create banyak pun sikit je dua je saya create kalau saya nak create yang baru saya akan delete yang lama dan saya akan create yang baru so i'll just do like that okay so let's look at this how it can be helpful but bio render is mainly for biology okay mainly for biology lah so it can be very helpful for biology students uh, chemistry also can can because you see i'm a chemist and i'm using this also <coughs> sorry not my templates um there are the templates okay if let's say anyone working with mice any one of you if let's say you need a picture that you wanted to edit for your work you can use the bio render you can take something like this if anyone working on the plants tomata see you can this is a editable picture it's a editable picture you can use this to edit uh okay chemistry students if you're using a mass spec you wanted to have an editable picture nicely you wanted to edit so you can use this to edit <laughs> populations if you are using if you are dealing with any population size so here you can find mainly on the uh, biological stuff so that's why i say this will be very useful for biology based researchers students okay it will be very useful for you guys okay let's go back to this uh, yeah okay so that is the bio render <coughs> okay apart from that uh, statistical tool maybe you are not familiar with this one i guess we have like a mini tab design expert jumps of fan and so on uh, also i would like to share all these are what do you call that planning eh? planning i'm just teaching you how you can plan your research so that it can become a very unique uh, and then you can use that and you can score highest mark okay so here i normally use mini tab i normally use means that i'm i'm learning myself okay i don't have any teacher i'm learning all this from youtube myself let me just quickly show you the mini tab so it will look something like the excel but okay see yeah, sometimes for biology or chemistry students you need to do statistical analysis like anova so this is analysis of variance you know how you obviously you need to go and find out how to use this okay because it's a software and from by doing this the anova table will be created by itself and also it will give you the regression equations apart from that you also can study surface plots like you can see here <coughs> when you have two independent variable with respect to one response you can have this kind of a surface plots so this is a, a amount of chitin and temperature how does it respond when we have two independent variables so this kind of a surface plots you can use all this you have to plan from now you have to learn from now trust me whatever that you are going to learn it won't be wasted it will be useful whether be it for your fip or it's going to be for other purpose okay <coughs> right so it can be done by using mini tab design expert or jumps of fair but all this um uh, yeah quite expensive but there is a way for you to go and find it in a very cheaper way i bought it for just very cheap okay so you can also find it so that is ai tools that i would like to introduce and i would recommend all of you to use to to make your fyp work to be more uh, better okay probably you could do a best okay so this is the sample report so this one is not the latest one obviously i don't think so i can share the latest one this one i took from year 2016 i guess okay so if you want to know about this uh, how your okay, you you can see the marks that i've given for one of the student i think my student i have given such a very low mark <laughs> okay because i maybe i'm uh, i check in detail also i believe it's important for all of you to know what are the elements are being checked so that you know where to score the marks 
okay so to know this you have to always refer to your sv you must know how to score the marks that's important okay so this is a very old one so you cannot follow this also <coughs> okay at the summary proposal there are three sections introduction um you have introduction literature review methodology a simple question that you can ask to write each of these in introduction what why and how these are the questions that need to be addressed and aspects there must be a research question research question is the problem okay introduce the problem and suggest possible solution at the introduction itself okay because we have four sections there right background uh, problem significance and uh, <coughs> objective so you can introduce all those there second part literature review why and how the topics method application and identify the research gap that you wish to close for the methodology how okay how to do how to plan how to design so the the the, the statistical tools that i showed you guys just now all you can use it for the methodology part actually okay trust me it will carry a big value for your work aspects you can focus on the research design procedures data collection uh, access to instruments ethics statement cost and funding this is if applicable so if let's say it it becomes a mandatory for you to go on the cost and funding yes you need but otherwise you don't need okay <coughs> that's a summary okay so uh, yeah so i would like to end with some saying knowledge no limitless edges which means normally people normally say that knowledge is the size of ocean but you, you know the size of ocean is 361 kilometer per square meter so uh I, why you have to restrict your knowledge to the size of ocean go beyond the edges that that's where you learn see like the software that i showed you just now uh especially the statistical software uh i i also was not taught anywhere but it was my own interest to learn just by checking through the youtube and so on learn learning is a lifetime process you have to keep learning that okay <coughs> so if you want to know more about my research work and so on you also can scan this qr code okay you will direct you to my website my personal website research website and also i always like to use this picture this is one of my aspiration um my expertise is on the conducting polymers so this, this guy on the left not this guy eh? this guy he is the nobel prize winner for the year 2000 in the field of conducting polymers so i met him in 2013 so this picture was taken in 2013 so i was like so happy because i'm working on the conducting polymers and i get the chance to meet the nobel prize winner of that material all right so that's why i always put this uh, picture in my thank you slide so fall in love in what you do it will direct you into the right path so thank you and we i wish all of you a successful FYP proposal. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay. Terima uh, kasih. Thank you so much, Dr. Kavi, for such a fruitful explanation. Banyak benda yang kita dapat belajar hari ni. So, siapa rasa dia dapat belajar banyak daripada Dr. Kavi hari ni, please raise your hand. Guna Google Meet ni. Saya. Kavi, I'm so happy. Even saya pun sangat happy, ada juga benda baru saya belajar hari ni Saya baru tahu ada phrase bank And um, apa yang guna untuk lukis bi biologi punya diagram tadi tu sangat menarik Saya harap student boleh ambil ni lah uh, Mungkin kita boleh open sikit Kalau ada student nak bertanya, boleh buka mic dan tanya lah Kau ada Dr. Kavi sementara ada masa lagi ni Ada soalan? Ada? Okay, kalau tak ada, um, terima kasih kepada Dr. Kavi sekali lagi atas bantuan yang diberikan atas penerangan semua dan kalau ada apa-apa mungkin pelajar boleh hubungi Dr. Kavi ya. Eh? Boleh ya Dr? Boleh, boleh, boleh. Sure, sure. Most welcome. You can always uh, contact me. I'll be in Pila only. Okay, so you can always contact me. So any doubts, regardless biology or chemistry, if it's about research, I'm always happy to help if it's uh, if I know about it. Okay, so okay. please most welcome. <laughs> Alright, jadi 
cukup. Uh, kalau tak ada apa-apa soalan dari pelajar, kita boleh tamatkan. So, student boleh scan uh, QR code ni untuk link kehadiran. So, saya akan letak juga dekat chat sekejap lagi. Jadi, um, okay. Okay. Um, sorry, saya tak pandai sangat jadi moderator ni. <laughs> So kita tutup majlis kita, benti kita ni dengan surah wa'as And semua boleh left Thank you again Dr. Kalbi Most welcome Okay, wish you guys all the best Do your best Okay, take care, bye Thank you Dr. Most welcome Thank you Dr. Thank you Dr. Thank you Dr. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Okay, jangan lupa uh, tulis attendance. Nanti dapat uh, ECG lah. Allah, nice.